so I'm really excited today to be joined by Enrico from Ritzy. Uh, Ritzy is a wonderful producer of Barbaresco that we've been working with for a number of years. Sebastian Payne was so taken by the charm and the quality of the wines that when he was responsible for Italy, he made sure that we got an exhibition label out of uh, Enrico too. Uh, the exhibition Barolo 2015 is still available at the moment. Um, but this session is really in honor of a wine that can be quite uh, an important wine for the region, or at least I feel it can be. Lange Nebbiolo can offer a really great stepping stone into the Nebbiolo wines of Piemonte, and it can start um, enabling you to see what Nebbiolo can do. It is such a um, specific and uniquely characterful grape variety that I think it's also important that you're able to get a great example at a good price point. So this won't break the bank, but did stand out in our blind tasting. We tasted, uh, on the day of this tasting, we were tasting all of the Italian reds, and it was an extraordinarily large tasting. So to go through blind, and for this, especially Nebbiolo, to stand out as such an impressive wine at this price point, um, it was wonderful to see that we had great unanimous voting across the buyers for this wine. Uh, the 2017 is in my glass at the moment and is on sale at the moment, but we also have an extra wine, and Rico joins us as the champs offer comes to a close, but as the Italian offer goes live. And wonderfully, a Barbaresco of his that has a special label for us is uh, available in that offer. It's the Rizzi Rico 2016, which is, uh, is it, the uh, hedgehog in uh, Italian. There we go, Enrico's got the label. So this gorgeous hedgehog on the 2016 Barbaresco has just gone onto the uh, website. It's just part of the Italian offer. And I do hope that if you've enjoyed the Lange Nebbiolo 2017, uh, and we'll hear more about that now, but um, I hope that then you'll make that step and have a go at the, uh, the 2016 Barbaresco that's now available. I won't keep nattering on. I've done the sort of slightly more commercial part. I'm delighted to, to hand over to Enrico, who's going to tell us all about his business and these wines and what makes them so special. Thank you for joining us, Enrico. Uh, Sarah, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm just drinking Barbaresco from Collezione Ricci, the 16. And so it's- uh, Fantastic. Uh, it's, I want to taste it together, so it's nice. <laughs> so, uh, really a pleasure to, to be here, to taste the wine, to have a little presentation about my estate. So in this uh, summer Sunday, it's okay, it's a perfect. Uh, and so we can, I can just uh, describe a little bit uh, about uh, um, the story about my estate, so I can introduce uh, a little bit the Ritzy Winery and um, the story and why I'm here to uh, explain my wine. So in particular, uh, I want to explain a little bit the story of the, the factor of, the, of my estate. So one year important, we are in 1974. My father, Ernesto, is the person who decided to change his life. So in the 1974, it's important, move from the town of Torino, where he had a factory paper, and uh, move to the family estate since a uh, long, long time, since the um, end of 19th century. In the, in the state, he decided to change completely his life, and in 74, decided to stop the factory and start to produce wine in this family estate in 19, uh, uh, of the 19th century. So he decided to change completely. He planted a vineyard, he restored vineyard, he restored the cellar. And this is, a, is the most important year of the estate because it's the year when we start. So it's a, mom a moment very, very important in the 74, completely different uh, condition. Uh, uh, the viticulture was different now. Uh, when we speak about Italian wine, uh, or when you speak about wine, you say, oh, wow, when you make wine, uh, Barolo, Barbaresco, wow, great. In the 70s, it was not like this. So we have to say that in the 70s, we speak about, uh, okay, Ernesto moved from uh, Torino to Traiso. Okay, we are in Piemont, in the northwest of uh, Italy. Torino is the main town. And my father moved in this little village in the Lange Hill. So the Lange, you can see in the picture, is this fantastic hill. Now looks like the garden because there are vineyards everywhere, everything. 
in the 74 was not like this. Was there much, what was, um, there were more field, uh, more forest, uh, it was completely different uh, agriculture. Now it's more vine, 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 or as and that. Um, and then uh, my father moved in Treiso, and people say, and the friend in Torino said, you go to Treiso for what? There was a, uh, the condition was particular, but my father was uh, from, I don't know, that's a, a completely crazy or probably a genius. I suppose for the second option, this is a, quite a genius because uh, it changes life. You say, okay, the future, uh, I want to work in the vineyard. I want to work in the, in the field uh, because this is my passion. He was born in, the, in 1940 and then he went until 14 years was always uh, stay in contact with the animals uh, in this farm and so it is a great passion so the wine is passion the wine is uh, is love and then you can be uh, you can work in this in this uh, field without the passion and so this is the same passion is the passion that my father transmitted to me and to my sister that we work together in the estate. And so my father moved from Torino to the south of Piemont in this Langa region in the village of Treiso. Treiso is one of the three villages where it's possible to produce Barbaresco. Barbaresco is the most important wine of the region together with Barolo, made with Nebbiolo grape. And, um, and both wine is uh, very, very important now we say, ah, okay, Barbaresco, Treiso, Neve, people that know the wine at Barolo, Barbaresco say, ah, okay, we know this place, we know for the good restaurant, uh, good wine, but it was not so popular. So here in this map, you can see we are in Piemont, in the south part of Piemont, and Barbaresco and Barolo is very close area around the town of Alba. Alba is uh, one of the most famous town of the region, the biggest in, uh, in our area and is known for the white truffle, for example. So you can, uh, uh, when people say Alba, okay, food, truffle. And naturally the wine that we, uh, that we have, the Nebbiolo, match very, very well with uh, our kitchen. And then naturally a good uh, glass of uh, Barbaresco together with uh, a dish of uh, tallarin, a uh, pasta with truffle is fantastic match. So this is um, the good thing. So what's happened then in the story of the, of the estate? So my father started in 74, then he create, uh, he buy vineyard. Uh, so, and now after more than uh, four, 45, 46 years, uh, we have an estate uh, really um, quite important. Uh, um, well known uh, in the area um, and so I'm very happy because we have uh, more than uh, 35 hectares of vineyard, 38, 39 hectares of vineyard. So it's a um, very important estate and with a great uh, uh, position, a great crew in Barbaresco. And then uh, me and my sister, we start to work full time uh, since 2004. So um, I just made uh, 16 uh, harvest, uh, 16 uh, wine, uh, and every year is a new wine that you produce. So every year is like to start from zero because the, the harvest the, uh, is different. So we start this year and you never know what's happened. So it's something that is magic in my job and to be winemaker. So winemaker and agronomist because everything is, is always different. Uh, global warming uh, change. Uh, other thing more, so it's uh, incredible. So here you have a, a little map uh, of the crew of Barbaresco uh, that is important to describe. So we have uh, in the red part, uh, we have the, our vineyard in different crew. Uh, in total in the Barbaresco area, we have this uh, special geographical area that um, is a 66 uh, different uh, geographical area and we vinify three different single crew Rizzi, that is the name of the estate, but also the name of the crew. Then we have Nervo and Pagliore. So we make, uh, my idea is uh, to show the Nebbiolo in all uh, these uh, characteristics. So we make a Lange Nebbiolo, that is my baby Barbaresco. Then we have Rizzi, Nervo, Pagliore, that is my three different crew. And finally, we make a special reserve. So we age longer the wine in my cellar before release, I can take, show you a label. 
So, and this is uh, the Barbaresco Reserva Boito. Vigna Boito is a, a particular is a particular um, single vineyard inside the Rizzi Crew, so in a particular condition and position. In my idea, that is important in, um, in the Barbaresco, in, uh, in, in the Barbaresco area, it's very, very important uh, for me to, to, to exalt the, the Nebbiolo. So the Nebbiolo is like the Pinot Noir, that's every single plot, uh, if you go in Burgundy, Ah, this vineyard is different. This crew is completely is a other characteristic. Probably in Italy, the Nebbiolo is the only one that can be really similar to Pinot Noir for this case. And so you have uh, the special. Uh, okay, you can see here better. So the different uh, the different crew is not so far one from each other, but the characteristic when you taste the wine uh, have a different characteristic. And then I'm a winemaker. And my goal, my idea is to make the wine all in the same style. So I don't want to make one wine in barrique, another one in big oak cask. Another. All the process of fermentation and maturation is similar for all my crew. Aging one year in big oak cask or Slavonian oak of 50 hectoliters. And then aging a little bit in concrete and then put in the bottle to, to say. Uh, aging on one other year in, uh, in in battle, that is a good uh, good way. So my idea is to show the difference of every single crew, and every single crew is also the characteristic of the different terroir. So if you are now in the geological, it's very important the geology. So probably I was the first to made this map in Barbaresco because before there wasn't. So four, five, six years ago, I decided to speak with my friend, the geologue, I say, okay, we have to do a map in Barbaresco because um, I don't know why Nervo has this characteristic, Boito, another characteristic, Pagliore, another characteristic. And now here in the corner, you can see already number one, two, three. Number one, okay, is here. Number is the Nervo crew. Pagliore. And the, all this one is the Rizzi crew. Inside at the top part is the Vigna Boito. So this is interesting because there are two different colors. So these are the two different kinds of soil. So Saravallian, the red, and Tortonian, the yellow. And the Saravallian is more sandy, a little bit more sandy and older, respect the Tortonian, the yellow part. So the Nervo is a Saravallian soil, more sandy, more nervous, more linear. Pagliore, number three, is in the clay, more clay, more rich, so it's more similar to Barbaresco of Barbaresco, more powerful, Pagliore powerful. Rizzi has the two different soil together, so the top part is uh, like Pagliore, the lower part is the Nervo, and so this is my Rizzi crew. Just inside the Rizzi crew, I have a special single vineyard that I produce, uh, depending a year, between uh, three and six thousand bottles a year of the, the Reserva, very little production of my uh, Reserva Vigna Boito, where I paint every single le label with different... Uh, every year there is... Uh, oops, I'm okay. Every single label has a different... Uh, this is the new label 2015. And this is uh, my, my Reserva, so... Okay, and, and this is all the wine that uh, we produce. Oh, okay, <laughs> sometimes, perfect. Um, and this is, is very important to study the characteristic of, uh, of the soil. And in this picture, that's, uh, I just uh, take these pictures uh, one month ago, more or less. And we are in the Vigna Boito and just under the house, uh, there is uh, this plot. This is very, very old vineyard that is more or less uh, 50, 55 years old and was planted by Bersano Vigneti when this farm was owned by Bersano Vigneti, Luigi Bersano. That he made in this vineyard is a personal and specific uh, selection for friends. And so now I decide to use the same grape for my reserva because I give some particular characteristic and the richness um, the roots go down into the soil uh, and the boito has 
is a unique. So I need the time and aging, but uh, give me a great uh, happy. So it make me happy. So the wine. And then I just decide to show you some pictures. So this is uh, just uh, here is the Nervo vineyard. We are uh, more uh, here. We are at 300 meter um, where we have uh, the, the estate. And then the Nervo is a little bit higher in altitude. And um, this is uh, the classical pictures uh, in the in the um, in autumn, in October more or less. And this is uh, the the color that is like uh, a paint. So it's a fantastic uh, moment. Uh, and so I like very much uh, all the season. Uh, when I describe my estate, I, I'm also like a tourist guide because I want to show you my uh, my area and show you some picture and then. Uh, Maybe after this lockdown, uh, people have, have the possibility to come to visit us. That is a fantastic opportunity and a beautiful place. Uh, and then a place that uh, we can enjoy. Uh, OK. OK, now I don't know, Sara, if you want to, I can explain all the wine that we produce uh, or. Um... Absolutely. It would be great if you, if you could tell us a little bit about how the wines are produced, um, especially focused on the Lange. OK. And I that um, we asked members on the four on the who had joined us on Zoom, how many of them are perhaps drinking the Lange? And I know that we've got over twenty people actually with glass in hand. So we might um, we might okay. give a little discussion about the wine. Okay, so perfect. So the Lange Nebbiolo um, is a wine that's uh, now is becoming more and more popular in our area. So people like uh, the Nebbiolo. Uh, Nebbiolo is a wine. Uh, the Lange Nebbiolo is particular. So there are some philosophy. There are some producers that make easy Lange Nebbiolo. Other producers like me that make baby Barbaresco. So I declassify Barbaresco to make Lange Nebbiolo and to sell it before. So in my case, this Lange Nebbiolo age one year in, uh, in Botti, in this Botti. Mm -hmm. And then I put the wine directly in the market. In theory, is uh, the classified Barbaresco because all my vineyard of Nebbiolo is are planted in the area of, uh, of Barbaresco. So and this is natural. Uh, the, my wine, uh, my Lange Nebbiolo, when you taste, you have just yeah. now an idea of the new Barbaresco 17. Because if yeah. you taste in the 17 Lange Nebbiolo, you say, wow, it's uh, really enjoyable. I like it much. Uh, you expect more or less the characteristic of the future Barbaresco 17. So this is my idea is to make uh, a baby Barbaresco. So make something wine important, but at the same time approachable. Normally I make a selection of the, from the parcel, some uh, or young vineyard of Nebbiolo or some area of Nebbiolo where uh, the vineyard where the characteristic of the soil give more elegance uh, fruity of the wine so for example i can't use uh, grape from for example um, barbaresco from the vigna boito i can use for the lange nebbiolo is too tannic powerful too much so the lange nebbiolo i chose always maybe the vineyard in the position uh, good position but let's give more fruity and uh, this uh, taste uh, that's uh, easy drinking, um, enjoyable, and yeah. also to make a, a little difference between uh, one Barbaresco Lange Nebbiolo, one Lange Nebbiolo and my Barbaresco, that's naturally yeah. But I think we can see with the Lange Nebbiolo, the, the sheer class that it has. You know, it's got that, uh, it's got the intensity and the complexity um, that sometimes Lange doesn't always offer. So I think using vineyards that are Barbaresco classified, but really just pulling out a few of the younger vines and the, perhaps the more elegant selection, as you said, um, so that you both enhance your Barbaresco and create a great Lange Nebbiolo. It's no, but uh, I want to, be commended. But Sarah, if you come in my cellar, you see in the body Barbaresco mm -hmm. everywhere. So we have yes. some Barbaresco, more powerful, more into some other vineyard that give more uh, drinkable also because it's a wine that is not expensive and so you open a bottle easily by the glass uh, so you depends uh, the area but you can drink like this and so also for aperitivo or something and you drink alone and so it's not to be the big uh, yeah. strong and powerful 
from the other side, I'm very lucky because uh, I live in Barbaresco. And so the Barbaresco is the elegance of the Nebbiolo. So in, you consider Barolo and Barbaresco, there are a big difference. Even if the soil is similar, the, we are very close, not so far. So just uh, uh, 10, 15 miles. So we are very close from, uh, and there is just a two hills from my, my state and Barolo area. Yeah. But in general, all the Nebbiolo, and then I want to, for me, this is very, very important, is uh, the elegance, the finesse of the Nebbiolo in Barbaresco. For me, this is very important. I'm tasting many wines, uh, many Barolo, Barbaresco, also with my sister. And my sister, that is uh, uh, more like this, uh, Barolo is too much uh, always, uh, the Barbaresco. Enrico, you have to continue to make elegant uh, Barbaresco, try, we have to con make the focus on this uh, drinkability, um, more approachable, uh, more elegant, more... Yeah. I don't want to say feminine or masculine because it's... Uh, no, no, no. I think it has charm. I think for me, your Barbarescos especially, and this Lange have this lovely perfume and charm. Um, and the Lange at the moment is very approachable. It, it clearly still has some Nebbiolo tannins, but they're, they're very well um, rounded. So they they coat the mouth. Um, yeah in a very sort of fine-grained way, rather than being um, off-putting, which could be a bit more angular and a bit bit more um, powerful. Mm -hmm. The tannins are well-managed and, and really well-integrated. Yeah, but because of the Lange Nebbiolo, finally, in my idea, I have to be also the characteristic of the Nebbiolo. You have, so the tannins is a present. So all my wine is very elegant, the nose very, very clean. Uh, the idea, so people that uh, taste the wine with me, they know my taste and say, they open a bottle and say, Rico, this is not your wine because I'm very, uh, people joke about me, but if it's a little bit not uh, precise and then there are some nose not uh, completely, uh, you say, no, but these, uh, I'm, I'm like this. So I want <laughs> wine uh, perfect, uh, uh, technically perfect, um, but also emotional. So it's important, mm -hmm. it's not easy. But uh, yeah. if you arrive to make this, it's, uh, it's perfect. So this is exactly yeah. what I want to, uh, to do in the wine. And then also to show, for me to make Lange Nebbiolo sometimes is difficult because uh, I say, I'm not, a, I make Barbaresco, it's not easy. Yeah. No? At the end is uh, I uh, classify some Barbaresco and then I try to make the more drinkable, enjoyable, uh, more fruity the selection of, from the vineyard. And then um, I decide, uh, so this is the Lange Nebbiolo. Then for the other Barbaresco, I want to show exactly Nervo, Pajore, Rizzi. Mm -hmm. Each one has its own characteristic. Nervo is the tension, uh, uh, the acidity is my, uh, oh, earth wine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's because it is less known, respect to Pajore, that is historical crew in Barbaresco, is one of the most famous uh, crew. Uh, but the Nervo for me is, uh, is my love. So uh, for the, the characteristic, the Nervo is the soil is typical soil similar to Serra Lunga, for example. It's yeah. a similar valley. And so the one is the tension in our region is not so powerful. So it's all vineyard. This is the Nervo. The Pajore is more balsamic, more balm, more uh, spicy, more rich. Uh, Rizzi, normally, the wine that I love because it's in the middle. So it's uh, take the characteristic of the two different soil in the same crew. And then naturally the, um, the Boito for people that want to wait a little bit uh, and then uh, age uh, longer the wine. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's nice. So, uh, and then the Boito is also something fun because every year there is a new label that uh, I use for uh, I have here 11, 13, 14, 15. Um, yeah. Next year, I want to show you just, uh, this is the new label. Oh, great. This is the new label. Oh. Okay, this is the two. I hope that you can see. Yes, we see that. Okay, so maybe it's not the best label that I paint, but for me, it represents something that is, uh, I'm a basketball player. You can see this, uh, <laughs> it's a duke. <laughs> 
Uh, and so this is um, this year when I painted, there was, uh, I just uh, know that uh, Kobe Bryant passed away, the famous uh, basketball mm -hmm. player in the Los Angeles Lakers. So I decided to I start to paint a label uh, with the color of lake, so yellow and violet. And so yeah. I decided uh, to use uh, like the, an the angels, yeah. the number it's eight, cool. number 24 was the two number that he used when uh, he played. And the vintage 2016 is 8, 16 the vintage, and 24. So it's just in the middle. Yeah. Uh, was a perfect player. We played fantastic. And the vintage 16 was amazing. So I decided to uh, use this label uh, in his honor. So What a great tribute. No, this is, uh, and then probably the best, uh, one of the best uh, vintage uh, in the last uh, of the decade, probably I can say yes, because for me the 16 is perfect and it's amazing with all kinds of wine. So mm -hmm. from the Lange de Biolo 16 was amazing. Uh, the, also, the, we make also the Alta Langa Spumante and also the Alta Langa Spumante, the 16. Is incredible. Yeah. So the perfect condition of the weather permits to have uh, all wine, uh, fantastic. So a perfect vintage. So that's great. What do you think of the 2017 vintage? Okay, so it's uh, interesting because uh, naturally the 17 is the vintage that's going to the market during the lockdown. So it was for us it was very difficult to taste the other 17, and so just after the now when it's finished, when we can go to uh, to a restaurant, I spoke with another producer and say, uh, we can organize a tasting together with some producers. So we put together in a restaurant, 15 producers. There was more than 20 bottles and we start to taste all the 17. So just to have an idea. And then I find uh, uh, the 17, uh, I have just this idea, but uh, also tasting the other producer. A very good vintage. So it's a particular because it was very hot. Um, there was uh, in advance, uh, we picked the grape uh, early. So there was a very hot summer. But at the same time, uh, um, I find uh, the tennis is important, but good acidity. In particular, in Trezo area, we have a very good uh, acidity. And then I taste the wine of the, some good producer that make a very, very good, enjoyable wine. Uh, the tannins is present, but uh, quite silky. And then in this moment, you can enjoy also in this moment. So right. I expect a good thing. So you have the uh, 17 uh, vintage uh, Lange Nebbiolo. You enjoy this. And also the Barbaresco. I just drink uh, yesterday, you know, three days ago, the 17 in a restaurant. I opened a bottle of uh, Pagliore 17. That is uh, important really enjoyable. We drink all the bottle uh, like this. So we expect more warm and uh, hot, but finally it was very, very uh, inter interesting and good acidity. So this is the yeah. uh, thing that in my wine in particular, we have a good acidity that this permit to have a fantastic, uh, I think that's a possibility to age very well. And so no problem if I don't sell now, I sell in next year maybe better. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, well, it's also great to hear that the, the site ripeness and the acidity means that perhaps members could leave their 15s and 16s in the cellar and enjoy the 17s when they're released. Yeah, that is uh, in probably the 16. You can wait a little bit. You can drink mm -hmm. better the 15 because it's uh, the 15 is another warm vintage. But more yep. So it's uh, now, I'm tasting now the 15, uh, and then it's uh, start to be enjoyable. And now, even if it's a powerful or rich, but mm -hmm. really enjoyable. The 16 is good, uh, but probably if you wait a little bit and we stock the wine, it can be enjoyable into two years, one, three years, 10, 15 years or more, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the 17, uh, I like. Uh, now, maybe for people that is not uh, Nebbiolo, eh, tennis at the beginning is a little bit, uh, they beat a little bit, but it's normal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. I see that we've got some great photos of the family. Yeah, this is a... Um, okay. came to visit, so they're very much a part of the business. Yeah, so but... Who's on the pictures? 
Okay, so the La Piana family, because even if all people call me Enrico Rizzi, mm -hmm. and so because Rizzi is the name of the farmhouse where I live, the name of the estate, and the name of the hill, and also the name of the crew of Barbaresco. So it's particular. Mm -hmm. so I live in Strada Rizzi, Rizzi Street, uh, in mm -hmm. Rizzi farmhouse, by the Rizzi crew. Um, so it's particular. But my family name is Della Piana. And so uh, my father uh, is uh, the man that he started. So Nesto in the 74 uh, decided to change his life, uh, make a revolution in his life, uh, and uh, he started. Uh, 32 years old, uh, he sold the factory, the family factory in Torino, and he decided to to work in the in the vineyard, to work uh, mm -hmm. to make wine uh, in the property in the family estate. Then my mother follow, so we have to make a monument to my mother because he decided to follow my father and support uh, uh, support him, and then also in every step. And then there are me and my sister. Uh, that we work uh, full time. Uh, I'm uh, in particular in the, um, all the process, so from viticulture uh, and in particular in the winemaking. Mm -hmm. And my sister, uh, if you come to visit me, normally there is my sister for uh, tasting, for uh, big um, bookkeeping, uh, something like this. And this is uh, the other two little boy, is my nephew, that's now is uh, the younger, but now is uh, nine and 12 years old. And then they start to help me in the cellar just now. So uh, it's funny because um, they are always with me, always in, in, in the cellar. And during the lockdown, yeah. uh, I, there was a glue to me because we go everywhere during the night to, to, to fight the caterpillar. <laughs> um, so it was uh, incredible. And now they, they help me to the bottling, uh, labeling. Uh, they love, in particular, the, um, the older one. Uh, ah, okay, he spoke with his uh, grandfather, say, Grandpa, uh, when I will be older, I make better uh, the estate. I want to increase more and more. So this is, uh, so it's fantastic when you see, and then probably is something that's happened. It's uh, the same happened when I was a little, um, uh, a baby. So I was like, yeah. like um, I go with my father, I, I go to work with him, I stay always, so he transmits me the passion, and he's the mm -hmm. same passion that I transmitted to my, uh, my nephew. <laughs> it's fantastic that they're involved and already getting excited about wine. No, oh, but in this moment, it looks that they want to follow, to work in the vineyard, in the cellar, so they really love, and then uh, the life is like this, but uh, I hope that, uh, there will be a continue uh, in the future. So something that's helped me also, that is nice. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, fantastic. So I think we've had some questions from our members. I think Anna has come back on online and is going to uh, guide us through the questions that have come from the floor. If you're ready for that, Enrico. Yes, sir, I'm ready. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Over to you, Anna. Thank you, Enrico. That was a, a lovely presentation and it's made me unbelievably uh, desperate to get over and visit you. And I'm sure lots of members feel the same with those beautiful photos. Um, I have a selfish question first. I am actually lucky enough to have a glass of the Lange Nebbiolo 2017. Um, I haven't decided what I'm having for my dinner yet. <laughs> you mentioned truffle pasta earlier, and I unfortunately don't have any white truffle in the house. <laughs> Can you recommend anything else that would go with the lange? <laughs> it's not the season. It's not the season in this moment uh, for uh, truffle. Uh, but the lange nebbiolo is a nice because it's a wine for me, really. It's not that you need a big dish of meat. Can can work very well, but also with a good pasta or it's a, it's a wine that I like also. I'm probably, I'm a, my palate is a tannin addicted. So and for me, it's quite used to drink it alone or just with uh, some, a little bit of cheese or grissini or something like this. But naturally you can enjoy, it's uh, the Lange Nebbiolo. And then uh, in my case, also my, the Barbaresco in general, but also my Barbaresco, you have not to be Oh, I open a Barbaresco and now I have to put together, uh, I have to think uh, which is a big dish. 
No, it's the wine uh, that's uh, so enjoyable, so drinkable. And my idea is to make a wine that you can drink, open a bottle and you finish the bottle. So they have the acidity, uh, the tannins is normal because it's the nature of the, the grape, but the acidity, they clean your palate. Mm, when you finish to drink, you start, mm, that I won't drink a little bit more. Probably now people that um, is uh, on video and then they have the glass uh, is drink alone. Mm -hmm. So it's not that you drink and then you say, my palate is it's boring to drink. So you drink, drink one glass, you continue, you, you feel like this, no? Mm -hmm. ah, okay. A little bit more. And then you say all the sensation. So for me, the one good wine, if you drink alone, and then you say, oh, I won't drink more. So this is the best way. So to consider the good wine, and then yeah. that is a good pasta, a good uh, dish of uh, carne, carne cruda, or uh, um, okay, I'm used to drink with uh, Italian uh, kitchen, but uh, I don't know in the UK, but um, I think that's a many, many first dish or um, something with the... Of, We've some had somebody, Enrico, suggest that it's going very well with some cheese at the moment. And we, so I know that uh, a little bit of parmigiano, comte, pecorino. Uh, yeah. So that is great. So uh, like this, and uh, one grissino, some bread, good bread. Uh, parmigiano reggiano, 24 mesi, 24 months. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah, exactly. I'll make it. I mean, I live in Italy, so for me, it's easy to find uh, something amazing to eat. Always some cheese, uh, parmigiano, particular, or but. Anyway, a good cheese uh, from uh, in UK, maybe pasta dura, so like parmigiano, pecorino, or something like this. Mm -hmm. Something dry, dry and, and salty and sharp. I yeah. think that would be lovely. Um, we did a poll, uh, we've just done a poll rather, uh, to ask members uh, about their travels in the region. And uh, you'll be pleased to know that over three quarters uh, of the uh, people on this uh, event, on this tasting, Enrico, are looking forward or hoping to travel to the region. So you might actually be expecting some more guests. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, You'll have to. It will be a pleasure. It will be a pleasure because uh, in this moment for us also is uh, strange because uh, during the summer, in this moment in the Lange, in, if you go in Alba, all people speak uh, German. Uh, and now it's not like this. So there are, uh, it starts to be more tourists arrive from Germany, Switzerland, um, some from France, uh, but it's not like uh, last year. So in the last two or three years, there was so many tourists. Mm -hmm. On one side, it's very good because there are not so much people. <laughs> and then also the restaurant is not so full. Uh, and the other side is a bit, uh, a pity because it's uh, so imagine uh, you can introduce and then do in particular this summer is uh, the springtime the springtime was amazing the weather was always fantastic and all people was closing in the house so not me because i live in the in the countryside so i have a, an estate so for me the life uh, i make a fantastic lockdown sorry uh, because but <laughs> Uh, I understand people that stay at home, but uh, I was very lucky because uh, I work much more in the in the vineyard. I walk in the in the vineyard, so walking in the vineyard is something that is uh, incredible. Probably this uh, moment, this COVID, uh, permit us to uh, say stop. Probably we are traveling too much. So well, for me, it was normal. Okay, next week I go to New York. I come back. I go in Oslo. I come no sense so probably now we have to understand that's okay i make wine uh, i want to work uh, control everything something that's like this for example this is a web seminar we can call like this no you can do you can do without any problem so you can if you, people want to know you personally i don't i don't need to take a flight to come just to make a presentation i can do something like this we can speak we can uh, share we can know and then naturally when I come, it will be the great uh, moment that will, that will be better. That's naturally. But uh, we can have to think uh, again uh, 
and change a little bit. But naturally, I hope that the tourists can come in this region because uh, me too, I want to travel a little bit more uh, for holiday also. Uh, that's not, but would be great. Uh, so this is this area is just so great. Uh, and I'm sure that all people that uh, after this period, uh, they can uh, will enjoy the food, the wine uh, and the landscape of the Lange region. That is amazing. Absolutely. Um, on that note, obviously about traveling less, um, obviously that's been that's been good for you working uh, out in the vineyard, but it's also obviously great for the environment. Um, and we have had a question from Chris Jeffries who asked, how are you managing climate change at Ritzy? Okay, mm, there are, okay, we can speak uh, just the, the climate changing and just uh, the environment. So for me, it's important for the environment. For example, I don't use any chemical deserve, never use. We use um, also some more natural possible for everything that we use the copper and uh, sulfur. So this is for the environment. For me, I'm not certified organic, but I work in this way because uh, it's the only way. There is no other way to, uh, I don't want to make a certification other thing just for um, bureaucracy, that's Italian bureaucracy. Uh, I don't know, but I don't explain, but it's complicated. So it's, uh, it's always like this. So I want to work in the best way for my health uh, and all. Naturally, the, the climate changing, uh, uh, we are lucky because for one side, the, the vineyard is amazing, uh, amazing tree. So the root is very deep, uh, and also in the, the worst condition, uh, you can make a great wine. So you can consider the vineyard plant in the south of Italy or in the area very, very dry, and the vineyard work. What's happened? That's uh, in the last uh, 15 years, uh, we have a more and more uh, warmest uh, harvest. So what's happened? Just the producer and the winemaker, the agronomist, have to modify a little bit the the work in the vineyard just to respect uh, um, so it's warmer but you maintain more maybe more leaf uh, you make a different work in the in the in the in the in the field uh, in, inside the, in the in the ground um, also because it is important to um, guarantee the acidity so because uh, in this moment uh, is the acidity and then for example in the past there was area that's uh, for example we are a little bit higher altitude in Traiso. this uh, just permit us to have always the wine with a little bit more acidity so this is important but this approach is so it's not uh, it's warmer okay from the other side it's better because september october with the global warming is much more stable respect the 90s or the 80s or the 70s What's happened? That's um, I'm not. Uh, my father is always when they have to start uh, the harvest. Uh, we have to pick. We have to pick fast, fast, because uh, in his mind is. Uh, you remember the 70s, the 80s. That uh, there was a start rain in the middle of October, and then uh, rain, rain, rain. So it's and so you want to pick before. It's always fast, fast, fast. For me, that's uh, we pick early respect uh, in the 70s. In the 70s, you pick in October, end of October. Now we pick in end of September, beginning of October. Um, so it's um, I'm more relaxed, uh, but uh, naturally you have to work uh, in all the step from from the pruning just to the harvest. All this step is important to control uh, the leaves, uh, so the, the photosynthesis and just to permit also the green harvest is important but not too much like in the 90s uh, maybe a little bit more just to maintain uh, the acidity it's a, it's a balance that uh, we have to and then the big problem that now you can work in one way but you don't know that maybe in the next uh, month will be warm or cold so for, for us it's like uh, maybe it's like this or not you have your experience and then uh, sometimes you're lucky <laughs> uh, there are many many uh, many things but the global warming for our region is uh, is quite good also because you have to consider the last uh, 20 vintage uh, say which is the vintage that you don't like uh, or not very good so you have 
Maybe the 2002, that was very cold and rainy. 2003, very, very dry, but because it was probably the first uh, very, very hot, uh, hot uh, summer. And then maybe now the 2009, 2017, 15, 11, that was warmer, but uh, we know how to work. So this yeah. is important. So it's uh, probably we have more experience now with also warm vintage. And then, for example, in Barbaresco, we have the 14 yeah. that in every part of Italy was not good, but in Barbaresco, there was a 50% rain and less respect to Barolo, and then uh, no hail. And so the 14 in Barbaresco is amazing. So this uh, <laughs> change also a little bit. Between, uh, some people say, ah, Barolo and Barbaresco are always the same. And no, we are very close, but uh, in general, Barbaresco, the less uh, rainy, and a little bit warmer is that Marone. Yeah. Uh, particular, but there are less rain uh, and uh, less hail. And then we cross the finger because. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, thank you very much. Um, can I, I'm hoping James Brocklehurst actually listened to you on the car on the way home and he's just logged in and I hope that he is ready to ask his question. James, are you there? Hi, yes, I am, if you can hear me. We certainly can. Yeah, yeah, we, we got home two minutes ago. The kids are in front of uh, Frozen 2, so I've got a, five minutes to myself. Nice pictures, nice pictures. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for the presentation, by the way, that was great. Uh, really, really enjoyed it, and I'm enjoying a glass of your Langanabiolo as we speak. Uh, so my question for you is, uh, are you more challenged in the vineyard or the winery? And then uh, which, which is more interesting for you? Sorry, Dave. Ch uh, uh, which is challenging? You're challenged. Wh uh, which is which is more difficult, or the vineyard or the winery, or, or more interesting, maybe? Uh, well, uh, so it's a good combination. Uh, I think that's uh, the most important for me is to have a good grape that's arrived uh, safe uh, and very good in the in the winery. Then, uh, when uh, you have a good grape, uh, this is a uh, I think that's uh, the mostly part is done. Then there are, uh, when you have the good grape, so it's very important. The challenge is uh, in the vineyard to make uh, good work because uh, there are many factors in the vineyard. So from the, you, have, you don't know what's happening, the weather, the rain, the hail, uh, the production, more or less. Uh, so many factors. That is very difficult. The maladies, the fungus. Uh, and so this is uh, important to have the good grape. Then... The challenge in the um, in the in the winery. So this is uh, my skill. <laughs> I try to to do the best and just to 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 do and also to create something that represent myself. So for some people say that uh, um, okay, the good vintage is very important, but I think that is very important the hand the person so because it's important in the vineyard but also it's important in the in the winery uh, for my philosophy i don't want to make uh, many particular work uh, in the winery so just to respect to what i receive from the the nature so for me i work more or less in the same style and natural yeast uh, um, not to i don't want to add uh, product or something like this because uh, if you don't need uh, it's better um, at the same time, you have to control, make analysis, uh, because uh, I don't believe in the people say, ah, the nature is, uh, uh, everything is natural, the wine is make alone, uh, I don't put nothing. No, this is no, that is, uh, we have to be honest uh, with the world that uh, uh, if not, the winemaker don't exist, eh? if uh, the nature make everything alone. So we have to control, we have to make uh, that the fermentation work well, so you put to make a pump over, or, Something like this is important. You control the fermentation, the maturation, take the decision, very important. When make the, um, when finish the, the fermentation and separate the skin from the wine. So this is an important moment in particular for the Nebbiolo. So you keep the wine 10 days, 15, 20, 25, 30 days in maturation, or this is an important moment. For me, it's a very focused and you taste and say, okay, and then in this way for me is important because in this moment uh, you start your project because the wine is like a project. So you make this, uh, okay, I started malolactic, I decide to start the malolactic soon. 
And so I put uh, the temperature in the cellar at uh, 20 degrees just to have, uh, because my idea is to make uh, the malolactic soon. So just to finish all the fermentation at the beginning. And so after I have just to stock the wine and control the feet, uh, there are many processes, so it's important. Uh, and then you have your philosophy and your project. So the wine is like a project. So uh, in my idea, I want that the wine have uh, this characteristic, then natural, every year is different. So my idea is to make a, a wine with this elegance, finesse, uh, but there are some years that give more fast, more warm, more alcoholic, less, more acidity. And so this is important. It's important to have a good grape, so just to have a good ripeness. And then my philosophy, there are some producers that if I take uh, the same wine, the same grape, and then I make the vinification, another producer made another vinification, take the same exactly uh, the parcel, which okay, you pick uh, half and the other half, after three or four years, we join and the wine will be different. Of because course. It's, it's <laughs> fortunately, but I use, uh, uh, for example, I don't like the oak in the wine. And so I use a bigger cask, but uh, that's, I don't want absolutely that state of oak. So it's, uh, there are many challenges in the wine. So it's, uh, then it's probably is like this, that is uh, so fantastic, uh, enjoyable uh, and, and people love uh, drinking a wine because uh, there is uh, a world behind. So there are uh, a story that is uh, the work uh, in the vineyard. Uh, if I think about the 2020, I can remember for all my life uh, that I was with my nephew uh, at the midnight uh, uh, picking uh, the caterpillar bag. Like this. <laughs> Then uh, I can remember the vintage uh, 13, that's I uh, age uh, 40 days, the boy toy in contact with the skin. Uh, every year there is a, in some story. Yeah. So it's, um, and probably there is no other work that I can do because I'm quite a little bit artistic. Uh, and so make wine is also make uh, something that is art. Uh, so every, um, Every wine uh, has uh, some story behind uh, something to. I don't know that I, I answered. No, that was a perfect answer. I think. Exactly. Uh, Sorry, James. So that's, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think, a challenge, I think, but to start to speak for me. No, like, James will be happy with that answer. We had a quick question from um, somebody whilst you were talking um, about your processes in the winery, though. Peter, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to ask on your behalf. And um, he was just wondering whether you add yeast uh, or do you rely on natural yeast for uh, your wines? Okay, so just uh, in this, um, I'm, a, I'm a wine producer. I work with my estate so I can decide. So, but I'm technical, but at the same time, uh, for me, my knowledge, so when you go out from the university, say, uh, in the yeast uh, to be like this and uh, selected. Uh, I make experiment in my all my uh, my story of vinification. I use a selected yeast, not selected. Uh, in the last year, I use a non selected yeast on uh, the Nebbiolo, and um, because uh, I find uh, I had uh, one year a, a little bit problem with uh, some tank using natural uh, selected yeast. Probably I don't know what happened, but it's also the global. Uh, Global warming, some changing, uh, uh, some selected yeast was selected in the 90s, and now we are in 2020. Uh, and this, uh, the weather is a little bit changing. And so then now we have a wine that's arrived, uh, normally the Nebbiolo is uh, 14, uh, 15 degrees in alcohol. So between 14, 50 is mostly all uh, vintage is like this. And then the pro I saw that uh, the natural yeast uh, work uh, very well. For example, in the vintage, very for me was, uh, I produced not so much in the 2018, good ripeness, but we arrive at 15 degrees. And then um, the fermentation with natural yeast in uh, nine, nine days, finish the fermentation, then start the maturation, but was very fast with natural yeast. So, I, why I have to buy the <laughs> from uh, I don't know from where or uh, 
And so I prefer like this and also maybe give me more characteristic. But from my point of view, the yeast uh, is important that they have to do one job, finish the fermentation perfectly, quite fast, uh, without uh, not too long, uh, because uh, if not, uh, this creates uh, secondary problem, uh, second fermentation uh, that you, uh, the natural yeast uh, work well, finish well, fast. <laughs> After is a saturation, <laughs> everything that is a perfect. This is important. Uh, people yeah. say, you know, this uh, yeast is uh, fantastic because give this part from this. No, that's we have the Nebbiolo. The Nebbiolo has say three years, so the flavor of the yeast uh, is after six months and then finish. Um, so it's important to. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, now, We've not got, unfortunately, time for, well, we do have time for one more question and Sarah's going to ask it in just a moment. I apologize to all um, other members who haven't had the uh, opportunity to have their questions asked so far this evening. I'm sure Enrico won't mind, uh, we'll email them over to him and to Sarah um, and we'll, we'll be able to hopefully get you an answer to the other questions that we haven't been able to have asked today. Um, but it's a thanks from me before I hand over to Sarah. So thank you. And Sarah has our final question. Yes, Enrico. I, thank you, Anna. I really uh, wanted to make sure that we also spoke about the Barbaresco 2016 with the very sweet hedgehogs on the label. And I'd love, would you uh, tell members a little bit about how you made that wine and how that's looking at the moment? Uh, okay, so this is a, it's a special... Uh, uh selection so just uh, this is a this label is a, just a selection for uh, the one society and uh, in particular is like uh, your ex, uh, excellence exhibition yes excellence excellence it's okay exhibition is my um, is a blend of uh, different crew of uh, Rizzi, Nervo and the Pajorin. Uh, the percentage I can remember 40 uh, was Pajore and 30, 30 Nervo or 40 Nervo for Pajore and 20 Ritz. It was a, a special selection that I just made. And then every year for a exhibition or a, this a Collezione I Ricci. And why I Ricci? Because in Piemontese, Ritzi, we say Riz, that's in our dialect, is, is mean Riccio. I Ricci mm -hmm. is Hedgehog. So <laughs> Ritzi is mean Ricci. In Italian, Ricci, and so this is the label. It's a special label, and this is my paint. Oh. Maybe in the future, I can every year I can I can change uh, the label of uh, I can change uh, <laughs> the, the, the paint of the Ricci. That's I like the animal is uh, so funny, and then because our hill was very famous for uh, there was many Ricci in the past, and probably take this name Edgehog Ritzi, Iris. Mm -hmm. Ricci and Irizzi, and probably this can, this is the, the step. Yeah, no, it's a wonderful wine. I do hope members um, have enjoyed the, the Lange 17. But as I say, now that the, the Ritzi Ricci uh, um, 2016 is on sale, I do hope you all, all go and have a, an explore and perhaps try a bottle of that over the next few weeks. I, su I suggest that the Collezione Ricci. That is uh, nice. I'm just uh, tasting now, and uh, it's a 16. That is uh, just a guarantee. Ah, Ritzi, and so another guarantee. And then uh, <laughs> it's a special selection that I made for uh, for you. It's uh, it's great. So it's uh, I'm very I really enjoy this wine. So it's wonderful. Well, Enrico, I have to say you mentioned it earlier, but your wines when we were talking about food matches. And uh, I realized that I've managed to drink pretty much all of my glass of uh, the Lange Nebbiolo without any food at all. And it's uh, definitely one that uh, excites the palate, makes you want to go back for another glass. It's very vibrant and, and very drinkable. So this I, is members, my <laughs> I do idea. hope that members have seen that too. <laughs> and I need to wrap up this session and say thank you ever so much to all the tasting team, Anna, Tim and Catherine behind the scenes helping but also, Enrico, thank you so much for joining us on a Sunday afternoon. We okay. really appreciate it. And congratulations again on the wine being a champion. And I'm so delighted that the new wine is on sale in the Italian offer. But uh, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. 
Have a lovely Sunday evening. Okay, thank you very much. Ciao Sara, ciao Anna, ciao to all people. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.